Hi everyone, this is Mani and welcome back to SK SecOps. Today we will be understanding Kubernetes architecture and its components. So let's get started. Kubernetes follows master worker node architecture. Let us consider we have a master node and two worker nodes. We can also have two or more worker nodes as well. But for simplicity, I have taken two worker nodes. Here node means a server or virtual machine. Master node contains four components and worker node contains three components. The first component in master node is etcd. etcd is key value store used by Kubernetes to store cluster information. It's like a database and you can think of etcd as Kubernetes memory. It doesn't make decisions, but it remembers everything like which pods exist, what configurations are set and the current state of the system. This is about etcd. The next component is the cube scheduler. Cube scheduler is a decision engine and its role is all about scheduling pods onto nodes based on the resource availability like CPU memory and some policies. If you see the picture, the pod which contains a container is scheduled on either node A or node B. By whom? By cube scheduler. Next is cube API server. This cube API server acts as the friend door to your Kubernetes cluster and its responsibilities are it handles request which means it receives a restful request whether you are using kubectl or Kubernetes dashboard. Every command you run hits the API server first. It also validates an authenticate request. The Kube API server component can only able to establish communication with etcd. No other component can't establish communication directly by reading or writing the data to etcd. This also notifies other components as well, which means once changes are made or events occur, the API server notifies other components like scheduler, controller manager or kubelets, which is part of worker node. Coming to the last component in master node, which is the kube controller manager. A controller is like an autopilot in Kubernetes that automatically keeps the cluster in desired state without manual action. For example, if pod crashes, the replica set controller creates a new one to maintain the required number of pods. These are the components of master node. Now let's talk about the worker node components. The first component in worker node that we are going to talk is the kubelet. Kubelet is an agent that runs on each worker node on Kubernetes cluster. The kubelet takes a set of pod specs that are provided by various mechanisms, primarily through API server and ensures that the container described in these pod specs are running and healthy. Next is the container runtime. We have several container runtimes in Kubernetes like Docker engine, container D and Creo O. The main purpose of the container runtime is to pull the image and run the container. And the last component in worker node is the cube proxy, which is the networking component. This helps in service discovery and managing networking rules so that it helps in communication between the pods. But wait, what is the control plane and data plane in Kubernetes? Control plane consists of components like API server, etcd, scheduler and cube controller managers, which are running on the master node. These components 
manage overall state and coordination of the Kubernetes cluster. Where the data plane contains the components like kubelet, kube proxy and container runtime that are running on the worker node and these components are responsible for running and managing application workload. That's all for this video about Kubernetes architecture. If you really like this video, you can click on the like button and you can subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos. And thank you so much for watching this video.